And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a beautiful 20th of May, 2024. Coming up to the Chris Yuck Podcast, episode 281. So you hate Canada, but you love the benefits. Yes, my dissection of the recent footage coming from Rebel Media in regards to student protests and their anger towards the Western world. Oh, my. Listener and viewer discretion may be advised because I will swear. I do smoke cigarettes and I do funny gestures and make funny faces and make fun of leaders. Oh, well. Stick around. See you in a bit. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast, a Canadian veteran's point of view on political, social, economic issues, and life. He is Krusty. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 281, 281 episodes, oh my god, you hate Canada, but love the benefits, yes, and uh, some recent news, uh, a few students pissing on this country, you know, oh well, uh, shit happens, anyway, this podcast is brought to you in part by, and supported by, the Veterans for Freedom Network, that's right, Veterans for Freedom, stand to, and coming soon, ladies and gentlemen, you'll see yours truly and other fine veterans doing their podcast on Veterans for Freedom TV, Stand tuned, stay tuned for that. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. My apologies for not having a show Friday. Had some technical issues with my soundboard here and the microphone. A lot of it was crackling, so I had to take it all apart, clean it all out, all that good stuff. No damage. I hope you can hear me. You know, knock on wood. However, I know I promised to get an episode up every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday for you. It's now Monday. Still had some issues last night, so my apologies. Anyhow, I will do a show tonight for you, and i do a show tomorrow night, too. So all that more coming up. Uh, I want to say thank you uh, to my new subscribers out there, especially from California, Virginia, and Illinois, Kentucky. A lot of states have downloaded my show. So thank you to my American listeners and friends out there. You guys are awesome. I'm seeing more Canadians download this show from my uh, host, Podbean. Thank you very much, my fellow Canucks, and some Europeans too, people from Ireland, Britain, and Germany alike. So thank you all out there. Thank you very much for the... Uh, the downloads and the praise I am getting. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Like, uh, if you like it here, just see you know, please click like, subscribe, share this content all over your social media platforms. Please do not be shy. I have a new format here. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, please try in my description, try the Ask Me application for $3. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, $3. Ask me a detailed question, and I will give you a prompt answer. You do not get charged if I don't answer the question, but keep it clean uh, because that way you're helping my show out helping yourself out too. And I'm actually, you know, singing for my supper, basically, ladies and gentlemen. So if you want to help the podcast, please use that link in the red uh, link down there. And you'll find the link in the description when I post these videos. And just go ahead and ask me. And not only you're just supporting the podcast, but you can help me out. And if I make enough, I'll generally give half to the Veterans Association Food Bank in Edmonton, Alberta. So I'll post this up here later on the show. So like the title card says, you hate Canada, but you love the benefits. Now, I've been watching a lot of the footage uh, from um, Rebel Media, True North, and all the protests on the Canadian campuses. I haven't seen much on the American campuses other than New York, Columbia, and other, uh, you know, wonderful colleges out there. You know, that charge you a lot of money to get your degree in basket weaving and gender studies. Uh, but who am I to complain, right? Now, I, I don't have a post-secondary education for a very, very good reason, ladies and gentlemen. Probably because back in the 90s, when I was weighing the odds, what to do with my life, I wasn't sure. And in the fiber of my soul, I knew that post-secondary education wasn't really going to take me anywhere other than the trades or something else similar to that. You know, I, I, I could sit and talk philosophy if I need to. I could sit and write some great stories and get an English degree, you know, and talk about history. Other than that, I was never really big into mathematics or sciences. I was never big into engineering or chemical engineering or mechanical engineering or electrical engineering. I just, it wasn't my thing, right? Now, I'm not condemning anybody who has pursued the STEM fields or has pursued the trades. I'm talking with Veterans Affairs right now, trying to get my ass into some diesel mechanics, right? Because there's still going to be diesel machinery out there and people got to fix them. But that's another story, ladies and gentlemen. 
My point being is that when you look at all these campuses, uh, especially my American friends and my British friends, too, who are having problems in their campuses with everybody supporting Hamas, right, in the name River to the Sea, all that good stuff, all that racial shit, because it is racial, ladies and gentlemen. It's anti-Semitic, anti-Semitic and it's racial. Okay? And regardless of how you butter up the poop sandwich, you can put all the lettuce and tomato you want on it, all the mayonnaise, all the Miracle Whip, you know, maybe throw in some chips there, too, if you want the crunch. It's still a shit sandwich. And what's being presented to us on a daily basis via mainstream media and via other curious citizens and, of course, independent media, who's doing a wonderful job out there. You guys are awesome. Yeah. I'd have to say True North, Rebel Media, Daniel Boardman out of Toronto, uh, other uh, noted comedians, uh, Ben Bankus, I think Greg Wycliffe has uh, taken some footage too, uh, of just the, the, the simple buffoonery that is laid at our feet every day. Now, you've heard me time and time again, ladies and gentlemen, on the, on the podcast here. I don't care what you protest. You have every right to. doesn't matter if you're in Canada, the United States, doesn't matter if you're in Britain, Germany, and every working democracy, you have every right to protest what you want. That's fine. But <laughs> considering the past few years, how our government has sat and talked about things like hate speech and being kind to people and being good to people. And you saw how our government treated people during the, uh, the trucker convoy, right? You saw how people were being treated during the pandem in regards to uh, protesting outside or having gatherings, or skating outside, how people were arrested and detained, how people were fined ridiculous amounts of money, prosecuted and chastised over words. And yet you're seeing blatant anti-Semitism, blatant hatred for Western democracy, not just for Israel. Now, Israel's not perfect, ladies and gentlemen. They've made some stupid decisions too. Okay? <clears throat> but we all saw... One way or the other, some nasty footage from what happened on October 7th, where Hamas, not Palestine, Hamas, backed up by Iran, backed up by whether other interests too, flew in with paragliders and motorcycles and attacked Israelis and killed Israelis and mothers and children and elderly and babies alike. A total fucking onslaught. And now you have all these campus kids promoting a virtue, upsetting the system because they want change. How is their impact going to change what's happening in the Middle East? Okay. How is that going to help anybody in the Middle East? Honestly, how are your protests here in Canada and the United States and in Britain going to thwart the Israeli government, going to thwart the Israeli military? Right? To my so-called history experts out there, back in December 7th of 1941, what happened to the United States? Now, Hawaii wasn't officially a state at that time. It was territory protected by the Americans. And regardless of how you personally feel about American politics or not, at that time or now, what happened? He had a power in the East. That was messing with China, messing with the South Pacific, messing with all these islands and all these communities surrounded by Imperial Japan. Japan figured they'd step over the line and attack Pearl Harbor. What did you expect to happen? America just lie down and go, okay, we'll just heal. Yeah. In turn, they killed 1,200 people on those islands. A lot of sailors, a lot of civilians. What would you expect the United States to do at that time? Right. Say if uh, it was the same thing, say if Japan got bold enough and invaded Vancouver Island during those years, Canada was already involved in World War II two years prior to that. What do you think would have happened? Something to think about, eh? I'm going to keep a video uh, here shortly uh, on what some of the uh, uh, people in Toronto are, are saying and some of the Canadian patriots that are standing up for us Canucks here too. So it, it gives you something to think about, ladies and gentlemen. Now, right back after this. 
stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And you're back, ladies and gentlemen, episode 281 in the Krusty Canuck podcast. So you hate Canada, but love the benefits. I'm your host, Krusty Canuck, and welcome back. Uh, once again, thank you all to my new subscribers and my future subscribers, too. If you like and hear what you see, click like, subscribe, share this podcast, all of your social media platforms. Don't be shy. Keep the Canadian content out there, too, because we still have some bills in the works in our parliamentary system that wants to promote Canadian content, but they want Canadian content that's kind of fluffy and cute, like puppy dogs and rainbows and popsicles. Oh, my. Fuck that. Let's get some real Canadians out there talking and speaking from their hearts. All colors, all creeds, all genders, all spectrums, all sexual preferences. Just get some more good people out there speaking what they have to say. Anyhow, like I said, I'm going to queue up a video here, too. Uh, it's from Rebel Media. And uh, basically what they witnessed in toronto recently well uh it's about 12 minutes long so bear with me ladies and gentlemen you know you know some of the words that are being said back and forth and just a few all-around decent human beings standing up for this country and pay attention to a uh, a black lady that's going to say something really terrible to david menzies so you'll just uh, see <laughs> what it's what's going on in that perspective ladies and gentlemen you know, but you decide. I'm not going to tell you what to think. Uh, take it as what, sh what you think and uh, just hope you come up with a, with a good decision and formulate your own um, thoughts, as we should, ladies and gentlemen. Efron Monsanto here reporting for Rebel News, and you may have heard of these so-called anti-Israel tent city encampments that have been propping up all over the West here in Canada as well. There have been over a dozen of these tent cities, and here at Rebel News, we've been at the forefront showing you what festers in these radicalization zone, where support for Hamas, the terrorist organization that attacked Israel on October 7th, is explicitly praised for the killing of 1,100 civilians and several hundred hostages taken. A group of patriots decided to sing, Oh Canada, for the radicals at 2 a.m. just this morning and face off with the mob themselves. For some background on how extreme these individuals are in these so-called peaceful protests, just yesterday my colleagues Alex Lavoie and Guillaume Roy were assaulted for bringing you the latest in the anarcho tyranny city of Montreal, where mob rule has taken over and Atifa now runs several universities. Oh, so tolerant is just my name. Here in Toronto's encampment, you have seen Zionists being pushed out for not adhering to the strict guidelines of no support of the Jewish state inside. A group of children with woke educators instructed them to save free Palestine. An Afro-Indigenous member slandering a free country and calling for its end. We'll see who has some knowledge of history besides TikTok, which I'm sure many of you get your information from. The knowledge from. you have is all fake information. Oh, shit, it's fake. Of course, that's the, your country is that's the response. My country? What's my country? Israel, apparently. My country is Israel. Okay. Yeah, well, what about this I was born and raised in Canada. You're questioning right? Canada as much as you're questioning Israel. Okay. Anyway, Canada doesn't move out, move out. Okay, born and raised in Canada. Just because you're Jewish doesn't mean you're Israeli. Just because you're Catholic doesn't mean you're Italian. Okay, it doesn't mean you're a Roman descendant. Okay, just because you're Protestant doesn't mean you're British. Okay, so these kids at university, duh. Sorry, <laughs> I'm just like, wow. Some people's kids, eh? Oh, it's the go. same thing as Canada Israel. Doesn't it's exist. the same thing Listen as to Israel. The hate. Take your opinions and shove it up your white ass. Still think so take your opinions and shove it up your white ass. 
Oh, no, no, no racial motivation there. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. I wonder who pays for education. A lot of black Canadians, a lot of white Canadians, you know, Canadian taxpayers alike. Yeah, yeah. Way to go, sister. In Canada doesn't exist? I do. And that's that's a hill that I will die on. So, wow. Yeah, so you don't like Canada? eh? Nope. I hate it. You hate Canada. Well, why are you here then, ma'am? So when Salman Siva, freedom activist and former political prisoner of the regime in Iran, Daniel Boardman of the National Telegraph got their friends together and went to the Toronto anti-Israel tent city early in the morning to play your national anthem for the demonstrators, I was there to capture the entire ordeal for you. Here's how it was on the morning of May 17th. Zionist or racist, really? Hmm, interesting. You want a country to exist? You want any country to exist and uh, you racist? Ah, oh, okay. for Canada and uh, we stand on guard uh, uh, for Canada as uh, we say in our national land. There's a bunch of Hamas supporters. Uh, they shouldn't be tolerated in Canada. There's a complete failure of institutions. The U of T has failed. Olivia Tau has failed. Toronto Police has failed. Doug Ford has failed.
What this means is Antifadas are within Justin Trudeau's narrow window of acceptable opinions. Uh, Antifada is incitement to violence of Jews, to communist revolution, uh, you know, glorification of Hamas, called for ethnic cleansing of Israel to make an Arab, which I've heard here multiple times. All of that is within acceptable purview. Unlike some politicians that they are taught, we walk the talk. And uh, Happily, peacefully, we wave Canadian flag, we sing O Canada, and uh, we are saying that this hatred in campaign must be end. <laughs> I don't want any hate speech laws. I don't believe in hate speech laws. Hate speech is not important. You should get rid of all the hate speech laws. But there are crimes you can commit with your words. There's criminal incitement. Right? If you get people together, you can find incite violence. There's well, trespassing. There's harassment. Right? You can protest something. But if you go to someone's bagel shop and scream racial epithets at them at their personal business, this is criminal harassment. We have laws on this. And this is what this is. And you can't, again, no ideological checkpoints in my country. I'm really disappointed uh, at Justin Trudeau, and uh, he just uh, talk. you know that? If uh, he has the minimum uh, dignity, integrity, we need to end this hatred in camp and in UFD, in McGill, in uh, Vancouver, in all the universities. These are not something that uh, shows Canadian value. You can see their chants, you can see their signs. All of them are hateful and all of them are uh, violent. Yeah, I've heard that before a few times. That's a little friendly situation. If you want to see more content like this, head over to deporthamas.com in order to sign our petition. And at that same website, you can see all of our content where you can see all the anti israels protests that has been taking over Canada. And if you agree with our message, sign the petition. Yeah, that was uh, Rebel Media, ladies and gentlemen. Interesting how they sit there and they're screaming about giving land back. Okay. They keep talking about colonialism, they keep talking about, oh my God, the oppression. And yet they forget how much is the left oppressed people 
in the past 10 years. And every March, it doesn't matter what you believe in. The average Canadian is not a racist bigot. The average Canadian doesn't believe in colonialism. It just is. That's how North America was discovered. It could have been the French, it could have been the Dutch, it could have been the Germans, but England won the war. You know, the Spanish could have not gone bankrupt and taken over all of South America and maybe all of North America. Who knows? But that's history. When I see those kids out there protesting, thinking they're fighting a good fight, how many of those kids have student loans? How many of those citizens actually have something valid to say other than let's just follow the, the leader and go along to get along? Kind of like what happened during the pandemic, right? How many people were sitting there screaming at you, punching their pearls, pulling the Karen and the Carl, saying, oh, my God, what are you doing? You're killing grandma. What are these kids doing now? People forget that we're, we're, we're starting to regress. This is not like the 1960s where they actually fought for something, where people stood up against the nasty war. People stood up against real segregation. They're promoting the segregation. Okay? You saw it yourself in the video. I'll leave this, all these links in the description, ladies and gentlemen. But it, it's, it, it's getting to a point where there's short fuses everywhere. You're going to find quiet people come out and be aggressive. You're going to find not so violent people come out and be violent. You're going to find the good guys and good gals out there. Turn fucking bad. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And that's just, ladies and gentlemen, you're back at episode 281 of the Crusty Up Podcast. Yeah, I'm a little winded here because I am personally getting sick and tired of seeing all these kids talk about how bad their lives are and how oppression is here and how oppression is there when there's no oppression in this country. You can sit here all day and try to tell me about the plight of minorities. Okay. History in this country has been. Good and bad. Did we have racial issues? Yeah, we did. Did we have land issues? Yes, we did. Did we have issues with rich versus poor, poor versus rich? Yes, we did. And then we had the middle class where people were getting along, people minding their own business, being able to save their money and buy things and purchase things and do things. Right? Like I said back earlier in the show, but when I was Weighing the odds, what I should do for an education, I did not feel university was a thing for me. But now you have kids in university think, well, I have an education, I'm smarter and I'm better, therefore I deserve more. No, you don't. You don't. You deserve what you put in. You deserve what you give. You give crap to somebody, you give somebody a hard time for their gender, for their identity, for their background whether it be racial or religious, you get that in return. To Gen Xers, we call that karma, and it's a real pitch. But you'll see. We're going to have to have a big humbling sometime soon. We're going to have to have a big humbling. If you don't like living in this country, no one is forcing you to do it. But if Canada was such a racist nation, if the United States was such a racist nation, if Britain was such a racist nation, why is there such an influx of immigration coming over via the channels, via the rivers, via the lakes, via the railways, via the aircraft, via the borders, some defended, some undefended? Why is there such an influx if we're such a racist nation? If we're so terribly racist, why is there so many people waiting in Toronto, Montreal, Prince Edward Island? You know, there's a video I was going to keep up. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave it in my description, ladies and gentlemen. But there's a video about some uh, migrant uh, workers in PEI that are threatening going on hunger strike if they don't get what they're promised. Now, whether it be a scam or not, the bottom here, I think the government has enough money and enough manpower out there to investigate the real deal. But no, a lot of it's our leadership and this virtue that's, that's being tossed around. Right? If you'd like to hear just ladies and gentlemen, please click like, subscribe. Look at the red uh, annotation there on my uh, video page. Support the podcast by asking anything in the asking app. 
So I go to the ASME app. It costs you $3, but a little bit of help. So like, tell me if you want to donate, there's other means to donate too. But please consider donating to the show. It'll be a great deal. All right? So back to my point here. If you don't like Canada, no one's forcing you to. Okay? But let's be realistic here. There's nothing toxic about being a male. Nothing toxic about being a female. If you want to swap identities and live your life as either or, you can do that. Right? But don't expect people to tiptoe around a charade just to accommodate your feeling. Same as you protest. Yes, you're protesting. You're, you're on the campus with your tents. A lot of those tents can be purchased and bought for you by whatever support group. Right? Unless you come from a well-to-do family. Unless you come from a privileged background make you feel good and you're fighting the good fight for the people in palestine that's great but keep in mind you're promoting hamas now is the war terrible you're fucking right it is seeing it myself you're damn right it's been terrible for both sides it doesn't matter who's got the bigger guns or not war isn't sexy ladies and gentlemen war isn't fun to some of you kids out there, and I will call you children. I don't care if you're over 20 or if you're 25. I'm going to call you kids because there's a sense of fucking entitlement there that deserves to be spanked out of you. And it's a goddamn shame your parents didn't do it to you before. So it's going to have to take people like myself and other people, other like my individuals, to educate you properly on them. I'm not threatening violence, but things are about to happen. You better get ready. Or as the Wolfies like to say, pick yourself up by your dirt straps <laughs> and get ready for the fucking entourage of reality. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I'm across the Canuck on the beautiful 20th of May, 2024. I do wish good things resolved, regardless of my innuendo uh, to make this happen. But I do. I do wish good things. And I don't want to see anyone get hurt. I don't want to see anybody lose any money. I don't want to see anybody lose their home. I want people to come home, have dinner with their families, preach their gospels, whatever they believe. And I don't care if you believe in Jesus. I don't care if you believe in Muhammad. I don't care if you believe in Moses or uh, Lemon and a monkey doing the old dance. I don't care. What I believe in in this democracy that it works, and it takes people like you and me, my American listeners, my British listeners, my Irish listeners, my German listeners, everybody who's listening to this podcast, it takes people like you. Go out there and do the right thing. Okay? Like I say on my campaign page, not the party, not the person, fucking the constituents and the country. That simple. Like I say, ladies and gentlemen, we can help each other in these trying times. Be good to each other. Stick around for tomorrow. I'll have another episode for you tomorrow. And like I always say, humanity and merit wins the day. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow night. And uh, <laughs> I'll have a better deal for you. Bye for now. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. Yes, sir. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. This has been another episode of the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Stay sane and thank you for listening. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Thank you for that avocado toast. Avocado toast always so good. It's so good.